Context grounding has come to UiPath, and in this video, I'll show you how to use it. Let's get to it. So as excited as we all were when we first got our hands on large language models like ChatGPT or Gemini, we all know that these models are not without their faults. They have a sometimes casual relationship with the truth. They hallucinate and other things. And one way of countering this is by using something called Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG for short. And RAG comes in many shapes and sizes and flavors. One of them is called Context Grounding. It is out now in UiPath in a public preview, I should say. Uh, we'll have a look at it in this video. So very briefly, when you ask uh, a large language model to retrieve some kind of information for you, for example, if I ask ChatGPT to tell me everything it knows about polar bears, right? it's going to try to look through all of the text that it has been trained on and then generate a response that fits my query you know, and tell me what it knows about polar bears, for example. But it's going to tell me what it knows about polar bears based on all of the data that it was trained on. So if, for example, yesterday, you know, scientists discovered that uh, polar bears have purple curly fur, then if ChatGPT was trained five years ago, it's going to give you the truth as it was five years ago. It's not going to talk about the curly purple fur. So if we have newer information that is not in the trained model, it could be information that is simply newer, it could be information that is specific to our business, um, then we can augment or enhance the response from the large language model with that source of truth, our own document, for example, about, let's say, polar bears. And that's what the augmentation in retrieval augmented generation is all about, is about enhancing the response that you get back from the LLM with another source of truth. Let's have a look inside UiPath Studio at how that works. Okay, so inside Studio in an empty project here, we can see that if I search for Gen AI activities up here, we have a number of activities, and one of them is called content generation. This is not a new activity, but it's been enhanced lately with some new features. However, when I add it to my uh, canvas here, we can see that it says, please connect to UiPath Gen AI activities to use this activity. That means that I need to go into my integration service in my cloud platform and create a new connection. So here we are inside my platform. I will go up here and find my integration service. And I'll need to make sure that I've selected the right tenant up here in the upper right corner, and I have. Then I'll make sure to select the right folder over here on the left, click Connections. And we can see here that I don't have a connection, so I'll add a connection. In the search field, I'll type in Gen AI, select the UiPath Gen AI activities. And then it's going to allow me to connect to those and make sure you have the right folder selected before you add this connection, because otherwise things won't work. I'll click Connect. And now we can see that I have a connection. If I now go back into Studio, I'll just delete this activity and drag it back in. Then we'll see that now it shows us the full activity with all of the properties, and we can select model name, prompt, and so forth. So we're going to select a model. We can just select Gemini, whatever, 1.0 Pro. We can select our prompt, and our prompt will be in 20 words or less, describe polar bears specific to northern Denmark, including their fur. So that's my prompt. Whatever is returned from uh, the large language model, I want to store in a uh, variable. I'll just type one called generated text. And down here at the bottom, we're going to select context grounding none. So now we're just accepting whatever com comes back from Gemini as the uh, universal truth uh, about polar bears in Northern Denmark. So before running it, let's add a message box. That will then show us the generated text. And now we'll run it and we'll see what it says. And it says, Greenland's polar bears are the southernmost subpopulation found primarily in the northern regions with thick white fur adopted to the Arctic environment. That's the response from Gemini as of right now. So let's try and 
add some new context or some new knowledge to this because on my desktop here, I have a document that describes some animals of Northern Denmark. And one of them is the polar bear. We don't have polar bears in Northern Denmark, by the way. But um, the polar bears from Northern, Northern Denmark are known to have curly purple fur. So that'll be the augmented response from our uh, LLM. So back inside Studio, instead of saying context grounding none, we can say uh, we have a file resource. That file resource is going to be the uh, text on my desktop. And now we have another source of truth. So if I run it again now, we'll see what it says. Polar bears in Northern Denmark have curly purple fur that provides insulation and camouflage. Okay. So I said LLM hallucinate, maybe I do sometimes as well. Now, instead of uh, just having a file as the additional source of truth, we can also have what's called an index. And basically an index is a database of more information where we can add more than just a single document. And the way you do that in UiPath is you go into Orchestrator. And make sure you select the right folder, then you create a storage bucket. And I'll add a new storage bucket here. And we will just call it zoology. Yeah, why not? And then inside of the zoology storage bucket, we can add uh, additional documents. And we have here on the desktop, we have the animals of Northern Denmark. I could have more documents because we could put in more documents into this folder. And then all of the documents would add to the context. So inside of UiPath Studio, what we need to do now is we need to first generate this index. Right now, we just have a storage bucket with a document in it. We need to tell the UiPath platform that we want to use this storage bucket's documents as an additional source of truth or as context. So the way you do that is typically you don't want to do this in the same um, automation that you actually do the query in because it can take a few minutes for the index to be created. So I will add another um, file to my project here. We'll just go indexer, right? And in our activities over here, where we typed in Gen AI, we had uh, an activity called index and ingest. And what this does is basically you point it, as I'll show you in a second, you point it to a storage bucket and you give the index a name because then you can refer to that index name when you do the retrieval um, in the other sequence. So the orchestrator folder that we have our storage bucket in is the shared folder. The storage bucket name is zoology and the index name, we'll just call it any mal stuff. Uh, the data type inside of our storage bucket right now it's PDF, so we'll select that. And then we can just uh, kind of run this file. And we won't really get much of a result when we run this. It'll just kind of run and then we have an index. What that means is if we go back to the original sequence, the main sequence here, and then instead of having uh, a file resource as our context grounding, we can select an, an existing index. And when we then go here, we can see there's no entries found. What I can do here after a few minutes is click the force refresh button, and that will give us the animal stuff index. And now we have that as our additional context upon which to ground uh, the response that we ask uh, the LLM for, and then we'll see what it uh, returns um, in our message box when we run this. Polar bears from Northern Denmark are unique for their curly purple fur. Now, I don't uh, suggest that you use context grounding the way I just did it for creating an alternate reality or alternate truth. Uh, but you can use it to definitely enhance or augment the stuff that you ask LLMs for. Um, before we uh, get to a couple of hangups or caveats or whatever you want to call them, uh, please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. It really does make a big difference uh, for my channel. If you like the channel, subscribe to it. And if you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the comments below. You know, have you used context grounding? What will you use it for? Stuff like that. Please uh, leave that in the comments below. But there's a couple of things that you need to be aware of when you're using context grounding. First of all, when you build these indexes, you 
there's a limit to how many indexes you can have in a tenant. And right now, I think in the preview period, the limit is five indexes. There's luckily uh, another uh, activity, and I'll just delete the index and ingest activity here. There is um, an activity called delete index. So you can delete indexes that you have created. So for example, here I could select my animal stuff index and then um, delete the index, and then I could create a new index in its place, but I can't get this uh, activity to work. It, it simply comes up with an error. So I have reached uh, on another tenant, the limit of five ind indexes, and then it won't create any more stuff. Um, so that's, um, that's a couple of things you need to be aware of. Five index maximum right now, and the delete index activity doesn't really work. Now I know context grounding isn't brand new as a concept or as a technology, but in UiPath it is, it's still in a public preview. So bear with them. They are improving it, um, you know, on a regular basis. And right now you can play with it. It doesn't cost you anything. Eventually it will consume AI units. Um, but I can see a lot of really great use cases for it. And if you can too, you're also welcome to share those in the comments below. And otherwise I just want to, again, encourage you to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.